Hello, everyone. How are we finding reInvent? We enjoying ourselves? Nods, yes, claps. More Gen AI, obviously. <laughs> All righty. I want to go straight into the agenda because I'll do a bit of introductions afterwards, but you really want to hear about what I'm going to be talking today. So we'll go over a very quick who am I. Me, this guy. Uh, what's on the menu? So really what we're going to be kind of focusing on today, three focal personas about the topic because we said, and I said the presentation today is about infrastructure as code and AI tales from the trenches. Why I say trenches? From the very beginnings of Copilot, Amazon Cube, obviously the better product, shout out to AWS, and we've seen many, many people use it themselves. But let me introduce myself before I dig in too deep. Hi, that's me. My name is Boyan Jivic. I'm an AWS ambassador and a community builder, as well as a principal consultant at a group called Mantle Group out of Australia, if the accent wasn't dead giveaway. I've worked on all of these. Uh, anyone here use Terraform? Hands up. Anyone here use, uh, I don't know, we'll go CloudFormation still. My condolences. What about CDK? Yeah, that's my family right there. I've used serverless stack as well. Personally, I use SSD at home. Uh, anyone use Ansible here? We have a group for you in the corner over there. It's the Ansible's Anonymous. Uh, we'll have a chat afterwards. And obviously, like everyone else today, I'll be talking Gen AI. Why? Because, well, personally, I found that it's incredibly useful. Just don't trust everything, and you'll find out why shortly. So what's on the menu? First of all, we're going to talk about IAC and Gen AI a bit in general. Uh, we're going to go from the perspective of three correlated personas. As a consultant, look, I've worked with multiple of these different personas and have been them myself. So this is from a learned experience, not just, hey, this is this nice blog I read by Corey Quinn. Uh, stories from each of them that reflect the risks of using AI, because we need to be realistic. This isn't Devon, it's not going to replace us. Thankfully, that fell through. Uh, and real world learnings. So this comes from multiple different organizations, whether they be financial institutions, their experience with Gen AI today. So the three personas, who's DevOps here? Nice. Security engineers, probably a couple of you. Technically, you're all security engineers because security is everyone's job. And what about developers? Yeah, you're the real people here. <laughs> so first of all, SRE, DevOps, DevSecOps, platform, insert buzzword here, engineer, right? I've been this myself predominantly for most of my career. So let's get to it, if the button works. It's evolved. That's one thing we've got to admit. No longer is just DevOps about creating YAML, as the lovely meme from the A-Cloud guru suggests. Um, it's about really now, really intrinsically using proper infrastructure as code, because I saw half the hands put their hands up here for CDK, right? Well, guess what? You're doing code. That's the beautiful part of it. Things have changed. So let's set the scene. The first scenario and the first persona um, is a fintech organization. They've gone through a modernization process. The DevOps team are really, mainly writing in Python, and it's a very common thing. Who uses Python here? Love it. How nice is 3.13? Uh, they're forced to use, however, TypeScript because that's what the developers use. And that's a very common pattern we're seeing. Intrinsically, TypeScript is not bad. It's like JavaScript's better cousin, but that's not really talking that much more. No CDK unit tests. That does make me sad, and you'll find out why. Uh, the UCFN guard, so at least I have something. So it's a nice bonus. And uh, co-pair programmers have just been signed off. So they're starting to use Q. Well, where did it go wrong? What really happened? So the DevOps team um, was asked to create a new stack. And in that short time, they basically assumed that you know, Gen AI means Zoom. It's going to be a quick release schedule, and it's just going to improve things, right? There was no preset ways of working. Remember, we're just starting off with CDK. So anyone familiar with cowboy engineering? That's what happened. Now, this is the early days. The copay programmer, in this case, it was Q, decided to hallucinate. I mean, it's AI, it'll hallucinate. But it was a fake library. And instead, when they ran that library during a CDK stage, I'm, I'm going to explain the stage in just a moment, it actually stole API keys. So what happened was, when you run CDK, this is the very, very typical process, proudly stolen from AWS, right? It's on their website. When you, run, when you run a specific section here, it converts your TypeScript or your Python down to using JSII to then create CloudFormation at the end of the day. Have a guess at where this library executed. Just have a guess. I'll tell you. It's right here. What actually ended up happening, their AWS, well, .AWS slash config and their slash profile got taken up, 
pushed out to a uh, site somewhere else, most likely in, I don't know, maybe Russia, maybe China, maybe wherever, it doesn't matter. But this is the new man in the middle. What we found was there was a group that was creating thousands upon thousands of repos. We were creating public modules saying, we create Fargate, we create ALBs, all in one, two lines of code. And what it actually ended up doing behind the scenes was stealing your API keys. What I'd say now, the biggest takeaway is be careful when you use it and have plenty of context. Well, the fix is exactly that, right? Guardrails and best practices are going to be your best friend. Gen AI will help you. It will you know, speed things up. It's intellig IntelliSense with steroids, right? However, if you don't have common sense, you're still going to cause the same issues as you have today. Contextual awareness is key. I can't stress that enough. And from a junior to a senior engineer, it may be easier to learn a language, but to really understand what you're doing from infrastructure as code, and code as well. If you just assume that it's always going to be right, well, that's not critical thinking. And as engineers, all of us here today really have the ability to do so. I want to harp on this a lot, but security, 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 security. That's going to be critical. And honestly, if I can show Amazon a little bit, because genuinely this is great, their Amazon Q IAC scanning uh, tool. It's free because you can sign up for a trial. <laughs> um, it allows you to basically, inside your IDE, when you're using, um, what do you call it, Amazon Q or writing an infrastructure as code, it can actually check the library that you're in for any specific faults. So that's the first persona. Let's head to the next. Security engineer. Technically, this is all of you, but that has been a title that's come out. Much like data engineer has come out in the last couple of years, security engineer has become really pivotal. So this is from a startup. So we've gone away from a fintech. We're more moving to a data startup that started its life off as a startup, more into a scale up now. Um, Terraform was their choice because they happen to be also working with Kubernetes and Databricks. And it makes sense, API first, and they didn't happen to like CloudFormation at that time. Please, AWS, speed up CloudFormation. Uh, no real AWS experience because they came from a shop who was predominantly Kube and Databricks. But hey, if I can write Terraform, I can do AWS, right? We'll find out more. And it was a relatively small team. When you go from that startup to a scale up, you believe that we achieved so much with so little. Surely we can do more. And, you know, Gen AI will get us there. And, well, setting the scene for it, it kind of did. The copay programmer was used extensively. Uh, anyone started writing uh, Django models as well. The reason why they used Django was because they wanted a preface and API they're all comfortable with because it was a Python shop, because we're talking data, like half of you here, they're very easy to use it with. The downside was there was no infrastructure patterns. They weren't really familiar with Terraform modules. They weren't really you know, comfortable with it. Security engineer had to kind of jump in to do some of that, so they became a DevSecOps person. And then finally, they were tasked with completing uh, compliance automation. But that wasn't great. A few things happened. Well, first of all, we again get down to the model of Gen AI recommending a public module. Now, in this case, there was no key stolen. Don't worry. You're technically safe. But the thing that's not safe is your bank account. Because what ended up happening was that public module had some great intentions. It was super fast. It also had EFS with uh, IO optimized storage. There's a few people cringing. They know why. Because it's quick. It's great if you have all the money in the world. So if you're an oil baron, great. Go for it. The automation suggestions as well, Ugh, they created a few CWEs, a few SQL injections. Why? Well, they started to use SQLite and just assumed, hey, whatever this tells me, it must be right. And uh, their costs went from this to this to, I can't even show you the next one because they said we can't afford you anymore. Not our fault. Clearly, their overspend went a bit nuts. The fix? I'm going to sound like a broken record, generally. But I have security across all layers. If you have the title, apply it at every single point. The software development lifecycle doesn't begin and end with your pipeline. It starts from your IDE, it starts from your pre-commits, and it goes all the way through. And honestly, if you just see that there, Amazon Q is pretty damn good at doing that. It'll actually tell you at what point where you're messing up and where you can improve. And did I mention guardrails again? You should have systems to check yourself before you wreck yourself. That's probably the simplest way I can put it. Because if you don't, what will happen is there'll be either financial or a security issue. And if you usually have a security issue and it becomes public, it becomes a financial issue. So again, common sense is key. Context is king. What about the developer? So now we've pretty much reached the whole crowd. 
this developer scenario was again an FSI because, well, at Mantle Group, where I work, we happen to work with a lot of them. And uh, in this case, the organization was relatively established with Java. Any of the developers write Java here? It's all right. I, I'm ashamed to admit it to it. Don't worry. <laughs> They're on Java 8 uh, with some desire to move to Java 17, which is good because, you know, the copay programmers are great at that because... 90% of the world runs on Java. Just ask your Android phones. Uh, the organization has some desire to move to containers. Let that be foreshadowing, Java and containers. I can see a few people nodding their heads. Bit scary, right? And finally, a copay programmer, much like the others, because they're a big organization, was just signed off. With FSIs, you have compliance. And when you have compliance, you need to have checkboxes you need to tick. And in this case, everybody assumed it was fine, at least from where the data went. So in this case, with the developer, uh, you know, they started to use the adoption. They used CDK because, again, it was more friendly because, well, Terraform really isn't that dev friendly. Who really wants to learn another you know, DSL other than just using another framework? Docker Compose was used locally because they thought, hey, we might as well save ourselves some money instead of running it in the cloud. And it was a bit of a heavy-handed container approach. They said, hey, we built a jar file. Just chuck in a container and run it. What can go wrong? Again, foreshadowing. And the infrastructure team was kept out of the loop. This is a bit of that developer-led containerization approach. Look, devs may create all the tools we work on today, but there's a reason we have specialists. DevOps may be a big subset of specialists, but we need to trust each other, right? Come on. So what went wrong? Well, first of all, so to nobody's surprise, well, at least to the people here today, uh, heavy Java containers led to multiple out-of-memory incidents. I'm seeing a lot of smiles, a lot of laughter, yeah. It happens. Uh, GenAI suggested infrastructure container patterns that were not inspected. They said, hey, use Alpine. That's got to be a few issues with a few things you might know as glib, or there was another one which was regarding the encryption and the way it interacts with DNS. Uh, Java's 8 to 17 was delayed due to slow Amazon Q adoption. I'm going to say it now. If you're going to do Java 8 to Java 17 or anything in Java, Copay programs are so well written for this because there's so much contextual data to do it. It is great. And even if Q is not your tool, there are third-party tools that work just as well by utilizing Bedrock. And then finally, the infrastructure team overhead increased. Just because you've moved things to a container doesn't mean you improve things. Mountain Fowler said it himself best. We end up with distributed monoliths when you do things wrong. So just because you have a microservice doesn't mean you've done a great thing. And well, they learned it firsthand. So how do we fix it? Look, I'm going to shill again. I love Amazon Q for this. I generally just asked it, and this is just me typing away, here's, a, here's my Docker file. How would you improve it? Well, conceptually, the first thing it did is, let's get you a non-root user. And if we're talking about developer-led, uh, what do you call it, containerization, they don't get this. From their perspective, it's like, it's a container, it's my code, it works. Don't worry about Linux users, users and uh, what do you call security group setups and such. Another fix is a given. You have to have that cross-team collaboration. The developers in the DevOps people, you have to work together. And the reality is, is because each one of you will have contextual knowledge that the other can use, in particular for speeding things up. And the reality is, is that your quality of code will be the key indicator of how quick everything is. But if you have a poor infrastructure layout, no good code will, um, what do you call it, supplement poor infrastructure choices. And again, I might have said it many times, but just to focus again, context is king. Everyone needs to know what they're working on and how they're working on. Just because you get a suggestion doesn't mean you should do it. I mean, if you got to ask to jump off a cliff, would you do it? That's the same thing you do every day when you use Gen AI. If you know what you're going to do, you know how it's going to be safe, and you're going to implement the right choices. So what have we really learned? On my side, I learned that it's better to embrace, but reflect. It's here, right? Same people that said, I don't like IntelliSense or auto corrections in my IDE. Same people who are still writing Vim today. Good on you, but you know, there's extensions to help you guys out, as well as the same AA group as Ansible. Um, just be aware of what you're doing. Context is critical. I can't say that enough. Just because you happen to know a language does not mean you're the right person entitled to know every little component that you're about to build with Gen AI. But when you do build it with the right context, it is quick, it is performant. What we've seen when it comes to converting functions from Java 8 to Java 17, what took us two to three days, took us two to three hours. And that's a realistic subset. We're not talking a crazy code base. We're talking simple functional improvements. And finally, surprise, 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 security, security, security. Just because you use Gen AI, it doesn't mean that it's secure by default. In fact, you should be going further with security 
when you start using Gen AI. And finally, a bit of a soft one, collaborate. Never silo. You will have companies to this day who still have their silos, right? But it doesn't mean you as developers, engineers, security engineers, data engineers, architects, have the means nor the right to not choose to communicate with your fellow workers. Everybody here knows something else that the other person doesn't know. How much more would we know if just we asked each other a simple question that someone else might have an answer to? It's an extension of ourselves. And because it's an extension of ourselves, just like Gen AI, the most critical thing we can do is communicate. So take it from a community builder. Embrace the community, speak amongst each other, use Gen AI, and you'll get to the point where it's really not that bad. And that's it. That's me. If you want to connect on LinkedIn, thank you. Thank you.